I wanted to highlight um, an all women panel just because I think that women are really rising in the ranks. We're really crushing it in this space. Obviously men are too, but I love seeing women um, become successful and network their way to the top. Um, and my thought is, and I wanted to kind of hear from you all, and this is totally open. Um, Obviously we had to overcome some challenges, but if you could kind of talk to your 17 year old self um, when starting your profession and when um, trying to figure out which route you want to take, what would you tell yourself? Do you have any tidbits that people can kind of take away from this um, with your journey and how you got to where you are? I mean, I guess Girl, how long, I was gonna say, how long do you have? <laughs> A good little um, takeaway would be nice. <laughs> I, um, so I came from a very small town. Um, I graduated with 82 people um, and the majority of my town, um, you either became a nurse, you became a teacher or you became a stay-at-home mom. Um, and you raised a farm full of kids and, and that was what you did. And so I, um, it's funny uh, that you said that you wanted to be a sports broadcaster. That's what I spent my freshman year of college. I went to Ball State, which is where David Letterman went to school. So I went to the David Letterman School of Communications and wanted to be the next Aaron Andrews. And at the time I was engaged, y'all don't judge me. I was engaged at 18 um, to a, a guy that um, it, it wasn't even that he was uh, not supportive. He just kind of the same thing. He was like, oh, that's that's nights, that's weekends, that's moving all around the country. Like, where does the John Deere tractor and the white picket fence fit into that, you know? And, and um, I was like, you know what, you're right. And so I, I played basketball and, um, you know, when I couldn't play anymore, I'd started coaching in, in Indiana in order to be a varsity coach, you have to be uh, an educator. Um, it's just kind of their way of weeding out and doing background checks and all that kind of thing. And so I said, oh, well, I really love coaching. And so I'll try this teaching thing. I came from a long line of educators. And so that's what I did. And so then when I went through what I call my quarter life crisis. Um, I had a lot of people judging me. Um, we had gotten married and subsequently gotten divorced. Um, and so I was young and divorced and, you know, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And so I feel like there's such a pressure on kids. Um, it starts even when you're in like a sophomore in high school of, well, where do you want to go to school? And then the minute that that's decided, it's okay, well, what are you going to major in? And the minute that that's decided, it's, well, what job do you want? Or, you know, what internship do you want? And um, people just need to let people breathe for a second. And so I think uh, if I had any advice for my 17 year old self, one, don't be engaged. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and two, just be okay with going to college, you know, with an undecided major or going for two years in a major and then switching your major or graduating with something and getting into it and saying, this is not what I thought it was going to be. Um, there's no law that says, you know, if you graduate as an education major, you have to teach for the rest of your life. Um, it's a great thing about being in America. And so, um, yeah, I guess just go in it with an open mind and just don't let the society pressure get to you because it's your life and you're the only one that knows whether you're going to be happy living it. You don't have to have everything figured out. Nice. Anybody want to add anything? I know it's kind of tough too. Cause like, if you guys work with, I know just being in the sports world, you know, we work with a lot of men, I think um, just in sports in general, but the marketing side is leaning more female based, but um, yeah, anything you can kind of share in terms of insight on kind of finding yeah, your path. Yeah, I would say, so two things. One is, what, to my 17 year old self, I would say, and it's kind of along the lines of what Brooke was saying, like, I don't know everything. Like, I don't know everything. And I felt this pressure to know everything. Like, especially when I, when I started in the sports industry, like it was okay to step back and ask questions and learn versus like feeling like I always had to prove myself. And so that's what I would tell the young Megan getting into the sports industry. Um, young Megan as a female, and as a minority female, like my, 
I worked on um, I worked on PepsiCo's business and I ran Pepsi's motorsports for years. So here I am, a black female, and I'm going into the motorsports space, and I'm sitting in a room full of men trying to negotiate or tell them what I want from an activation perspective or from an asset perspective. And it was really about confidence. Like I could not, I, I couldn't not go in the room and be confident, which means I had to know what I was talking about. So that younger self, make sure you're continuing to learn, continuing to learn. So when you're sitting in the room and you have the audience, you're smart, you're educated and you're confident to ask for what you want. So I, I would say that I, I haven't had any moments of like feeling not accepted because I was a female or not accepted because I was, you know, a minority female in the space, but I, I have put self pressure on myself to, you know, you've got to represent, like you've got a lot of females in the industry and we're representing each other. And, and you're right, we are on the rise and there's a lot of women in, in very powerful places in our industry. And I love it. I love it. And, and the good thing about it is that people reach down and, and, and lift us all up. So we got to represent, be smart, ask questions, know your business. And be I love confident. that. And I think finding a mentor too, I could add to that. I think um, just even all of us, there's, I've never met any, I, you know, I, I speak to um, Pink Mentor Network. I know that they're a local organization, um, but she always says, I've never met a woman I couldn't learn from. So always constantly being a sponge, you know, asking questions and finding out, you know, different paths and how people got to where they are and, and um, networking and all of that just kind of goes into um, lifting each other up. I think that's super important and, and what's really helped me find the confidence and, you know, feel empowered to go make those decisions. Cause I'm like, if you could do it, I could do it. So, um, I, I echo that statement. Yeah. I would, I would love to piggyback on what Brooke and Megan have shared and Brooke, like kudos to you. Thank you for sharing so much of your personal story with us. Um, I think, you know, as you get a little older, you realize the sort of one, two punch of being true to yourself and being confident in that truth. Um, and, you know, I, I'm from Alabama. I, people don't always hear the accent, but you know, when I was younger, I, I would be very self-conscious of being treated as ignorant or um, sort of subjugated because I was a very young looking southern woman so you know chatting on the phone or, or talking to a client who is um a 50 something year old sea level man you know I, I felt in uh that pressure to prove yourself over and over again and then i think you reach a point where you gain this confidence of knowing i know i know what I'm, i know i know my area of expertise i know what value i bring to the table um um, and being able to do that confidence of like, I may not be, I may not be the orthopedic surgeon in the room. I may not be the pro athlete, but I am the marketing expert and I'm Southern and I'm cute and I'm here, you know, and I'm here to, to talk to you. So I think to my 17 year old self, um, I love the advice to like, slow down, slow down, enjoy the ride, you know believe in yourself and, and know that, that you have every right to be confident um, and, and just kind of own it to, to not be so desperate for that approval and the praise and just own where you are because it's totally okay to be there. Love that. Agreed. You guys hit on everything I had thought of. So Yeah, I wish uh, y'all had told me this. <laughs> but, but Lillian struck on something too. Like, it's like, you look back now, like with years of experience and it's not just the advice you give yourself, but it's also like looking back at the experiences you had um, and how you were treated in those experiences. So like working for, you know, they're not all males, but I'll use the example, like certain male, whether it's presidents, CEOs, leaders. And then now that we rise through the ranks and we're in these similar positions, like we want, well, me personally, I want to make sure I stay relatable. I, I want to make sure like I have my own style, like, you know, cause I've learned along the way what works and what doesn't, what alienates people, what doesn't. And so I've been able to take that and kind of morph it 
into what for, it works for me and is authentic to myself. And that has really helped. And, and of course you add, you know, as you get older, you always get more confident. I feel, um, you know, that's one thing my 17 year old self could have used a lot more of is confidence uh, and more mentorship. Those are my two big things. But, but as I look now, I look back and say, okay, well now we're really lifting up the next generation. So the more we can give back on the areas where we had gaps is the, the areas of big focus. So it's the the confidence building, the mentorship, the conversations like this, making sure we help others try to avoid any pitfalls we may have had or think of things in a wider scope than maybe we had the opportunity to do, you know, way back when Megan and I were working together. We won't talk about when that was. I think what Don just said, it, like it struck my heart and I want to just kind of overemphasize it. Um, when I first got into sports, I was too nice. I smiled too much. I hugged, heaven forbid. Um, I was too blonde, you know, like uh, all, all of the things. And uh, people gave me the advice of, you know, you have to get harder. You have to get um, more I can't think of a word other than the cuss word, and I don't want to cuss on this. So, but you know, you have to get you have to get more B. Um, and um, I, it's it's just not in me. Um, like it, it, I trust me, it's in me, and I it can come out. But I, I didn't want to live that day to day because that's just not who I was. And so, um, I, I remember very uh, distinctly, um, we were walking into a room and we were doing a pitch and it was myself and the president of my company and the CEO of my company, both who are 50 something year old men. And we walked in and I was plugging the computer in and getting ready for the presentation of which I built the entire thing. I was running the presentation. I knew all of the things. They were just there really for looks. Um, and a gentleman walked in and he said, oh, I'm, I'm so happy you're here. I was looking for someone. Um, I would love a cup of coffee. And I just smiled and said, no problem whatsoever. I'll go down and get you some. But just so you know, the uh, meeting is going to start a little late because I'm, I'm running it. But let me go get you that coffee. And like smiled and went down and got us all coffee and, and came back. And he was so embarrassed when I got back. And I could have very easily, you know, made him feel even more embarrassed. But it was just like, it happens. Don't worry about it. But now, you know, let me tell you about how I do a lot more than make a really great cup of coffee. And we'd all just kind of laughed about it. And so I think as females, um, it's okay to smile. It's okay to be friendly. Um, sometimes it's taken out of context. And so you have to know that boundary. Um, but you don't have to turn into this, you know, uh, a hardcore ice queen in order to to make it in this world there there are some nice ones uh still left i i echo that brooke i have the exact same um it's not a problem or an issue but i people tell me i'm too nice and when i when i flagged it for myself as a potential issue it was in how i was managing people below me like maybe too nice and letting them get away with something or i'll, I'll just do it i don't you know you know i i i noticed that was when my niceness might be affecting my ability to be a good manager, but I, I wasn't willing to get that up, actually talk to an executive coach about that. Like, I, I'm not going to be someone I'm not. I'm a super nice person. I just am. I agree with you. I have it in me if you cross me, but that's just how I do business. I mean, I've, I've literally had people say, oh, I, I hate when Megan calls because she's so nice and she's going to ask me for something and I'm going to have to give it to her. Like, that's the best negotiation tactic ever, right? But, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm super nice. And I have to recognize when my niceness might not be beneficial to my team. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be my authentic self. And if, you know, if you don't like it, then, or, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. There's a, but there's a reason no there's nice all people. kinds of people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for, for every for every good cop, there's a bad cop. Elena and I play good cop, bad cop. <laughs> we do sometimes. Good cop, bad cop within your organization when you go into meetings and negotiations, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that's just a, it's a really good tactic to utilize. And it doesn't mean that anyone has to actually be mean. It just means that, you know, sometimes you're not the one that has to say no. Right. Uh, we got to yeah. come up with a better, a better uh, phrase. Yeah, I think cop. you're right. Yeah. Let's point that. 
Well, that's what we live on the agency side. Like we are the, we are the bad cop. So I'm like the nice bad cop, but we play the role so that the client can, can be all smiles and hugs. And we have to be the ones to, to have the tough conversations. I understand. And smile. (laughs) So I also funny. agree with you too, Brooke. I, you know, when I, my first big job, I would say, you know, blonde female from Ohio, moving to Dallas, big city, big lights, you know, working for, you know, um, the good old boys club of Dallas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a, it's hard. It's a break through that ceiling. It's hard. And I think it still exists to some level, even today, hopefully not as to the level it was at that time. But, um, but for me, the only way to do that, to break through that was to actually leave the market. Um, and that's just something I realized that I had to do because they always saw me as the original, whatever age I was when I moved there, you know, person. And I'm like, no, no, but I've actually like grown a lot. And these are the new things I bring to the table, but it's sometimes, you know, those impressions just stick with people. And so you have to really do a lot of introspection and make sure you understand like where you can go to be that authentic self. Mm -hmm. Um, so and a place that supports that authentic self. I think we learned from, you know, our team at Ortho Carolina, they trust us to make those decisions. And our boss, Blair, which you guys might know, um, you know, hires us and trusts us to do our job. So I remember distinctly one time I walked into a partnership meeting where we were getting pitched on a TV package or something like they're like, hey, you want to pay us money so you can get on TV. And um, I showed up with my manager, who was a, a woman, um, and it was, you know, two women coming in and Blair was not there. And she kind of looked around and it was a woman and she looked around and she's like, well, where, where's Blair? Um, assuming that we couldn't make the decision. And we were kind of like, uh, no, we're the ones who showed up to the meeting. We're the ones that can make the decisions. He sent us with full confidence that we could be able to handle, you know, we would be able to handle this um, meeting. So kind of just teaches you to take up space and, and kind of come into your own and, and build that confidence as you get get into the industry. So um, I think all of your stories were so inspiring. And I think that we, we've all gone through our fair share of struggle and challenge um, to get to where we are. But I think um, with this series, we're really trying to just uplift the young students who are really trying to break into the industries. Um, and we're going to do a couple more panels with broadcasting professionals and support professionals like in sales and business development um, and events and things like that. So um, more to come on that. But I was super excited to talk to you ladies and learn from you all um, about your experiences and um, how we can help the younger generations.